Welcome to the Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Rose. And as always, a big shout out and a big welcome to all the free spirits walking the Maverick path, the independent thinkers, the people who believe that they are a tribe of one. I am so glad to know you and so happy to talk about the Maverick energy. Today we have, again, a repeat guest who is fabulous and wonderful. I'm so thrilled to have her on, Pam Gregory, astrologer. And we are going to talk about a maverick cycle that is coming up with Saturn and Neptune moving into Aries. And we're going to talk about this new wave of energy getting ready to happen. So welcome, Pam. Come on board. Thank you so much, Kathy. You know, you, you're you somebody who knows me deeply and, and well and uh, always gives me great clarity. So I love being with you and, and, and sharing. We've had some great conversations. I'm so, so looking forward to uh, the one we've got today. It's really exciting, I think. I it love is. the way you're wearing red. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, we are making an airy statement and you have the red pillows behind you. So we will engage in red energy. And let's talk about the wave of development that's happening in humanity, this staged development. And even though you talk quite a bit about Pluto going into Aquarius, which it's tiptoed in now, we're shooting this in April of 2023. Pluto is going to go back into Capricorn. Um But the larger wave, what I keep tuning into when I ride down the timeline and I try to sense the energy flow, I keep hitting this spectacularly powerful time frame that happens in the spring of 2025, Saturn and Neptune entering Aries, hitting the Aries point. So first of all, what are your thoughts about Neptune leaving Pisces and going into Aries yeah, Saturn meeting, uh, Neptune meeting Saturn going into it. Yeah, really fascinating. The phrase that kept coming to mind when I was thinking about this, Kathy, is brave new world. Mm-hmm. Brave new world. That's what kept coming to mind. And I looked back at a, a previous time in history when Saturn and Neptune had been conjunct, not in Aries, it was in early Capricorn. And that was in um, 1989. And 1990, and that was a massive period for world history because that was the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Yes, you know, with Neptune, Neptune dissolved the wall, Saturn, mm-hmm. and the old order because that was. I was actually in Berlin at the time, and they were take literally taking down the wall. So there'd been huge revolutions in Poland, Czechoslovakia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, etc. East Germany, obviously, and it it was a very tangible demonstration of this is the collapse of the old world and the beginning of, you know, the opening up of, Mm -hmm. of, of, of humanity and country. So I think that's very interesting with Pluto moving through the last few degrees of Capricorn, as we know, and demolishing that old order and starting to edge into Aquarius, freedom, et cetera. Whatever Pluto hasn't fully completed in that process, I think the Saturn Neptune conjunction will do that. You know, again, Neptune mm-hmm. Saturn dissolution of any old structures that no longer offer our highest good. So that was one of the first set of thoughts I, I had, and I feel it so strongly. Yeah. And aside even from talking about Aries, which we'll talk about more in a, in a moment in depth about that actual sign and the energy, when we think about Saturn and Neptune together, we're really looking at two very opposite energies, Saturn being structure and practicality and necessary controls and tradition and grounding the energy and Neptune being this evanescent, beautiful, flowing abstraction you know, spirituality and fluidity. So we're talking about two opposite frequencies coming together, which is mind boggling in a sense. But, you know, one of the things that offers in these moments is Saturn providing the conduit for Neptune to come into the earth plane, you know, grounded Neptunian energy, which Neptune doesn't want to be grounded. Neptune is like a helium balloon floating along and somebody lets go of the string, but Saturn's going to pull it down and go, let's get into the earth plane. You know, so that's an interesting concept too, grounded Neptunian energy. Because it's it's almost like um, 
visionary leadership, isn't it? Or, or, or visionary new episode, which Saturn then makes tangible. Is this realistic? Can we build it for the long term? Mm -hmm. it's, it's thoughts like that. But I, I think it's also grounding in a very new spiritual age. That's the feeling. Do you feel that too, Kathy? Oh, my God. I mean, when we look at 23, 24, 25, 26, and we see this progression of all those outer planets changing signs, first of all, we just look at that time frame and we go new phase, undeniable new phase coming in yeah. um, without a doubt. And then we look at the fact that Saturn and Neptune will hit what's called the Aries point zero degrees of a cardinal sign it happens to be in aries which makes it you know extra potent but the aries point for those who are listening who don't know about it talk about the potential for high public projection high visibility world stage something being revealed something coming into visible focus right so something wants to be seen isn't it fascinating too that all right, so we're talking about the time frame of April, May, 2025, when Saturn and Neptune are hovering together there at that early degree of Aries, Aries point. But isn't it fascinating? Jupiter goes into Cancer and hits the Aries point because that's zero cardinal in mid-May of 2025. And then in early July, Uranus goes into Gemini. So we have April, May, June, July of 2025 being this, it's like dominoes falling Click, 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 click. You know, that's set up, isn't it? And of course, yeah. Jupiter has already sensitized that zero of Aries. Yes. In the winter solstice. So mm -hmm. you, that's already the new pioneering um, future vision for humanity that Jupiter has set up. Mm -hmm. And now Neptune is spiritualizing it and Saturn is grounding it, as you say. Mm -hmm. So I think this is going to be just immensely, you know, immensely exciting. And particularly after. Uranus starts to move into Gemini with Pluto in Aquarius. I mean, if we look back in history, that was the time of the, the um, Italian and European Renaissances and, and also the Age of Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution. I mean, incredibly creative, productive time for society. And also, the I think Uranus and Pluto make a trine five times. Yes. Gemini and Aquarius and a double sextile to Saturn-Neptune. Yes, that's a harmonious potential of fluidity and and energies working together. And that that's something to focus on that that just gives me a deep breath for a moment. Except at the same time, it is super jazzy. It's it's sparkling energy. And you know, my theory is always that there's a spectrum of expression and we have free will here on the earth plane as to whether we use this at the highest potential or the shadow. And so we do have to talk about the potential of the shadow because not everybody is making a shift to move at the highest level. They're, you know, in this earth plane, in this classroom of life where we as souls incarnate into bodies and use bodies to polish and experience the world in the physical plane, not everybody is at the same grade level in the classroom of life. And that's not some people are higher, some people are lower. I don't mean it like that. That sounds egotistical. And you know, all that power structure stuff. What I mean is, we do incarnate into a very diverse classroom of life, where we get to see people at all kinds of different levels learning at different paces, and then free will comes into that too. So there, there are some shadow potentials that could come up. This energy could be misused, could be, you know, some people could flow into a shadow side. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about that in a moment too. The positive side, of course, keywords for Aries, pioneering, yeah. courage, brave new world. Yeah, new and, and sovereignty, I think, your own autonomy, yes. sovereignty, your own sense of inner power as well independence individuality self-sufficiency which the north node moving into aries in july will set us up for because yes. i think it stays there until january 2025 mm -hmm. so that north node in aries is the setup to to, to, mm -hmm. to go to go it alone but within the group go it alone mm -hmm. but within the group with pluto and aquarius mm -hmm. become more self-sufficient detach from 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 the, the mainstream society that has existed up to now. Well, it's also something about 
Neptune and idealization. So when we talk about currently right now, Neptune being in Pisces, coming to that anoretic degree, which is the 29th degree, which means when planets hit the anoretic degree, like Pluto in, in um, Capricorn ongoing, and Neptune shortly in Pisces, the anoretic degree creates a big pressure to get it right, to learn what you need to learn. And it it sometimes bubbles up to the surface, the shadow, to say, let's look at the exaggerated side to this and let's find correction. I find Neptune and Pisces, some of the shadow things that have come up. The beautiful thing about the transit of Neptune and Pisces is that we are now compassionate for people who have been bullied. We are compassionate and sensitive to people who have been marginalized. There, there's a great awareness of saying, I need to be sensitive to people who are going through intensity. Let's be sensitive. Yeah. But yet that has gone too far in some areas where now people are afraid to say anything because, gosh, I don't want to offend somebody. And, you know, so there's a correction. There's a, a need to sort of balance all that out. So I think what's going to happen because there, there is a segment of energy that is oversensitized now or embracing victim a little too much, you know, really being aware of I've been victimized. So you need to be sensitive to me. I understand that. I'm not criticizing it. That's going to shift though, when it goes into Aries. Yeah, and and, and, and big that, time shift. Yeah, uh, that's so interesting. It's such a different energy, isn't it? Pisces to, to Aries. My guest today on the Maverick Podcast, astrologer Pam Gregory. And, you know, looking back in history, it was so interesting. What I found is a lot of organizations were set up when Neptune was in Aries that were about leadership. Yeah. for the underdogs there was the red cross there was saint bernardo's for um for orphans um there was the salvation army um there were a whole range of 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 um mm. organizations that were set up to protect i understand slavery was abolished around 1865 and serfdom was was abolished in russia all when Neptune was in Aries. It's sort of looking after, taking leadership for the underdogs in society or the victims or whatever. So that's the shift. But it's so interesting, isn't it, as Neptune moves towards that anoretic degree, how much of the veil are we going to get? How much of the the disillusionment or, or, the, or the thickening of the illusion mm -hmm. almost? The thickening of the dream and the deception and, yeah. you know, drug-induced or whatever all of that side of things are almost going to crescendo. And then we get the break point as, as Neptune and Saturn move into zero mm -hmm. varies. It's going to be a real mm -hmm. shift of energy, isn't it? I really think it is. It is a collective understanding of, again, Saturn providing the, the portal or the opening to allow Neptune to come into the earth in Aries, which is remembering you are empowered. You are capable I believe in your ability. So yeah, maybe you have been victimized or been bullied or marginalized. I have compassion for that. I love you. But now you are able to stand up and make, it ch make a change and feel your courage again or feel your ability to get back on top of this. So it is engaging the warrior energy, not just the courage, but the confidence and the initiative, because Aries is initiative. So it's like, I don't need anybody else to take care of me. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to self-sufficiency. Of course, I have moon in Aries and I love that. You know, if ever there's a buffet line, I always end up first in line. <laughs> <laughs> I don't push and shove, but if I'm hungry, I can end up first in line in any buffet. <laughs> But isn't, you know, isn't that what is most helpful to me? Because if somebody is unwell or feeling victim or whatever, I always try and see them at their best, them at their strongest, their, them at their most capable, rather than just sympathizing, because sympathizing, you know, is, yeah. is, is, is wonderful. It's very feminine, but it doesn't necessarily help that person get back on track. Mm -hmm. So see them shining in their strengths. Yeah. And 
and it feels like a whole new episode, doesn't it, Kathy? A whole new episode for humanity, which is really going to start to blossom with those trines between Uranus and Pluto. Do you feel that? I do. And a lot of the people who have gone through a traumatic yeah. phase of understanding where they have been bullied or marginalized or victimized, or, or, they, you know, it's like come up to the surface and they're feeling vulnerable and sensitive are now I'm hearing from them and they're going, but I'm getting tired of that. And I want to be a warrior. I want to feel powerful and strong again. And I just don't want to be thinking about being victimized anymore, but they had to go through a period of that where it came up to the surface. And I think humanity also needed to go through a period of saying, let me give you a hug. Let me give you a helping hand. Let me show you I care, but it's a bit imbalanced. And the, the next phase comes in that says, now let me support you while you do it for yourself. And that can be very compassionate. Absolutely beautiful. And it's very interesting, isn't it, that we have always through this lifetime and many lifetimes deferred to external authorities of many kinds. That's what we've, that's how life was operated, you know, parents, police, teachers, whatever, you know, we're, we're, we're very obedient people with these external authorities. But I think the process of Pluto moving through those last few degrees of Capricorn is saying, look inwards to your own inner authority. Mm -hmm. and that really starts to blossom with Pluto moving into Aquarius. You know, well, let's, yeah, let's think about um, from the parent point of view, one of the things that has happened in about the last, what, five or six years, is let's say if you have um, your child engaged in a traveling soccer team, okay? One of those things, you know, where they travel from place to place and they're engaged in, in all these games and competitions. You know, there's been a wave of saying, well, even if you didn't win, you still get a trophy for participation because we want you to feel good about yourself. That's Neptune and Pisces. We want you to feel good about yourself. So even though you didn't win, you still get a trophy. The shift, I think, when it goes into Aries is going to be the message of feel good about yourself, whether you win or lose, it doesn't matter, just carry on. And we don't need to provide the trophy, even if they didn't win. You know, it's a and maybe that needed to happen for a while, saying we need this message for you to feel good about yourself. But Aries is very different. Aries, you know, com competition is part of Aries. Yeah, yeah. And Aries. also that, that feeling of having such a strong sense of center that, don't, yeah, that doesn't matter. There's another game around the corner. You know, I, I, I'm a strong, self-sufficient being. I got to um, tell you, some of the most spiritual, coolest people I've ever met have been hardcore athletes back when I was doing martial arts. And before that, in my athletic days, some of the coolest people, because there wasn't the need to fall apart if they didn't win. They were just like, hey, forget about it, move on, carry on and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's and kind of yeah, they were warrior, isn't it? It's a spiritual exactly. warrior energy. And these were highly competitive people. Don't get me wrong. They wanted to win, but if they lost in a sparring match or if something happened, they just regroup. Yeah, they didn't collapse. Right. And they it's kind of like, you know, you walk a dog every day and I, I play with my daughter's boxer. I, you know, we babysit and I observe dogs now. And what's fascinating about them is they don't hold on to things in their consciousness. If something happens that makes them upset or they get into a, you know, an altercation with another dog or they get scolded. They feel it for the moment and then they move on. And Aries is that very simple, direct energy yeah. being in the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. And, and, and the Aries people I've noticed also have a very clear sense of who they are. Mm hmm. They're present. Mm -hmm. They know who they are. They've got a very simple energy. If I want to achieve X, Y, Z, I set that goal and I, I just go do it. I don't fuss and fret and ask other people. I just go do it. So there's this sort of, there's a self organization ability, a, a self, it, so you generate your own energy in your own life and just go do it. It can go solo. Mm -hmm. It can be a pioneer doesn't need to check mm -hmm. in and that's very vigorous around Aries energy and I think we're going to see a lot of that in, in a very positive way 
Yeah, it's remembering our own capability and remembering to praise ourselves, that self-sufficiency. Now that's Aries done well. Yes, Aries done well. The shadow side, you know, Aries not done well can be absolutely addicted to, I need your approval. I need to win in order to feel good about myself. I need to dominate. I need to be extra aggressive in order to feel good about myself. And that's the shadow side. That's the vulnerable side. And there's, you know, with every single sign, we have the shadow and the high, the spectrum of expression, you know, and that's why sometimes you see people with Aries sun sign who are very, very insecure and attached to external approval in order to feel good about themselves until they go, wait a minute, that shadow side is pretty boring. I'm just going to feel good about myself, <laughs> you know, because being addicted to outside approval, you, you can never guarantee it's there, but I can guarantee I'm going to be there for myself. Every yeah, single time. It's a bottomless pit, isn't it? If you need outside approval, it's never enough. It's never enough. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and also talking about the shadow side, you know, that if again, looking back in history where Neptune's been in Aries and you will know this well, um, Kathy, is that there's there've been so many wars, so many wars, a lot of them religious wars, like the Crusades in the early 1200s, the Hundred Years' War in the 1300s, the European Wars, War of Spanish Succession, so many religious wars, so-called yeah. idealistic wars. But the wars have just gone on and on and on. And even um, with the US, the Civil War, Neptune was in Aries. Um, and also World War II, I think Neptune was then in the very early degrees of Libra. So it was still very close to that world axis. But, you know, opposite, yeah. opposite those degrees of Aries. And also Uranus was in Gemini then. So it's it's very interesting that there's such a history, very strongly in the US, of Neptune in Aries representing war. And we've got to change that pattern. We've got to step out of that shadow because, I mean, how many how many centuries do we go around the hamster wheel? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that is the shadow potential. And I want to be very careful, as you want to be very careful, that we don't anchor that possibility in somebody's mind, creating fear or worry. But it is a possibility that needs to be addressed and looked at. Because, again, if we're talking Aries energy, Aries isn't oh my God, I'm afraid. Aries goes, got to look at it. Got to face it head on. You know, yeah. the Aries is the ram. <laughs> head Absolutely. down, move forward. And I think what we so often forget is that we as collective humanity are creating this. Mm -hmm. Every moment, the future is invisible. We as collective humanity are creating this. And the reason for mentioning it is that so we won't repeat it again. Let's do it better than all of the, the previous times when we messed up and made a pig's ear of, of Neptune in Aries and it expressed as aggression. Let's do it beautifully as a, as a new spiritual episode for humanity. Let's make it magnificent because it's down to us as humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not having the future imposed on us externally. That's partly the lesson of Aries. It's up to us to initiate a very different era for humanity. Exactly. So many of the signs are there, you know, those beautiful aspects between Saturn, Nep Neptune, the the the, the, um, the sextiles to Uranus and Pluto with the five trines between, between them running through 26 through to 28. Mm -hmm. I mean, beautiful as, as, as creative Renaissance evolutionary energy, which I think will become much more spiritualized than we have ever known in this lifetime for sure and probably many lifetimes. So new beginning, new phase, dealing with self-sufficiency, dealing with inner confidence and pioneering. And the word pioneering, you know, what are we going to pioneer? Well, my sense with Uranus going into Gemini, Pluto in Aquarius, and really starting with that great conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn conjunct in Aquarius, which was early 2021, my sense is where where we're going to pioneer is the potential of the mind and quantum entanglement and quantum manifestation, you know, that we're going to open up that understanding that when we engage our thinking, the universe cooperates and body, mind, spirit healing 
And science may be starting to tiptoe into that area to go, yeah, maybe there's something to that. You know, science talks about it a little bit now, but I think we're going to see a surge, but not just needing science to tell us it's true, people engaging it themselves. Absolutely. 100% with you on that, Kathy. 100%. I think it's almost a blending of of, of, of science and spirituality. So we, we almost have a better understanding of the spiritual side via the science to legitimize it for those people who aren't fully on board, but we are really, really going to understand the mastery of our mind mm-hmm. and how any, everything is energy and frequency, how we can use intention, focus, and therefore manifestation, particularly mm-hmm. You know, you're moving into Gemini, the sign of the mind, Pluto in Aquarius, the sign of the higher mind. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really going to get this in such a big way that everything flows once we get our mind straight and we Mm -hmm. stop the negative self thinking, the, you know, the churning, the, you know, that even I suffer from and have done recently. Um, You know, we still we get on top of that. Yeah. And we become almost I mean, this is the wrong term, really, but a thought policeman to say, no, stop it. Yeah, what I'm doing is manifesting what I absolutely don't want. Stop it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And sometimes we need to experience that. Sometimes we need to have these moments of correction, where even though we know our thinking creates our reality, sometimes our underlying fears or issues or vulnerabilities come up, we engage in what we don't want, it manifests, we go, oops, got to get back on track. <laughs> Sometimes we need that as, but it's the correction that's important. But what I want to see or what I'm hoping is more and more people believe they can do it and take responsibility for themselves and do it. Because there are a whole lot of people I know who go, yeah, I think I can do it, but why don't you do it for me? And it's like, well, why don't you pioneer into your own potential and find a way? And the other thing about Aries is the courage to create your own techniques. Yep. The courage to find your own technique or create it and to say, you know, and this is kind of the maverick part of me to say, I don't need an authority to tell me how to do this. I can figure it out. That's Aries. I can yeah, figure absolutely. it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Create your own golden thread, your own methodologies. But that is such, as you've as you've said it, Kathy, such a perfect combination of that strong Aries energy plus Gemini in in um, mm-hmm. plus Uranus in Gemini and Pluto mm-hmm. in Aquarius. It's Air okay. and fire so, working like, together. Absolutely. And, and things are going to happen so fast. And I think out in the world, we're going to see huge exploration in space, acceleration in transport, air, tra- mm-hmm. air travel, space exploration. But mm-hmm. also with Neptune in Aries, I think we could see a much greater exploration of the deep seas. Yeah. And all that has to offer in terms of deep healing, Neptune. Mm-hmm. And new discoveries that come in, science really um accelerating but particularly on you know you work a lot on the mundane level so you're looking at it on the big picture level and i'm looking at it individually many times which is nice to have a conversation because we both you know we're looking at different things in a way but i would like to see each individual understand that we are in this phase right now where sound waves are manifesting very very powerfully that what you say when your words go out into sound waves when you say it out loud the potential for manifesting is enormous and that's the same if you are using a drum and sound waves are going out and you're affirming or you know what i like to think about is musicians right now like my son in a band and he says mom when i'm when i'm playing the, the feeling of my heart energy going out to those sound waves and affecting the world and, and the people in the audience receiving those sound waves, we can palpably see the difference our music makes in people. So, you know, understanding how sound waves affect us, and that includes toning or um, and how science may increase that too. Definitely. You know, I, I even heard that in the UK, in London, they were performing some surgery using sound frequency. I mean, 
and and the harmonic, the eleventh harmonic, apparently yeah. shatters cancer cells. Mm -hmm. That was discovered by a music professor in mm -hmm. London many years ago, Anthony Holland. So, I think there's going to be huge discussion how sound actually affects the physiology yes. in dramatic ways, and that's very exciting because we can create sound for free. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fantastic as a new, a whole new area of healing technology with gong baths and sound baths, etc. And that I think is going to sort of explode mm -hmm. as as an area for for healing. Um, mm -hmm. That it, you know, and again, we can learn how to do this at home for free, listening to beautiful music and creating heal healing um, coherence within our own bodies, <clears throat> within our own bodies. And I think that's going to be fabulously exciting. It's all about coherence, isn't it? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I would love to see more spontaneous drum circles happen. I mean, that's my idea. I'll put a big bonfire in the middle, yep. put drum circle around it and have everybody just jam and create those rhythms. Because if you've ever participated in a drum circle, a drum circle that's done well, where people can get into rhythm with each other, what happens is not only are the drummers getting into rhythm but then all the cells in your body get into rhythm with them. And there is a palpable energy field that happens. And right now, just people playing with that because, you know, so many people are afraid to surrender to movement or to feel sound flowing through them and let their body move. Um, so many people are afraid to surrender to that, but, there's enormous healing that happens when you do. There's something so magical and spiritual when you can say, I don't care if I look stupid or not. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to let it move through me. It affects every single part of your body. And I think starting to see ourselves as the light body, less dense, more permeable, mm -hmm. so we can flow with these sounds and the coherence of the sounds, we start to see ourselves as just part of the ebb and flow of living consciousness rather than this sense of separation. Mm -hmm. And I think Saturn moving through Pisces will start to really dissolve that sense of separation from the universe, from each other. I think we're gonna have a much greater sense of just flowing with living consciousness with all of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's fascinating to me in the wave pattern of development right now is that we have this April, May, June, 2025, when there is this initial blooming, the initial step into Aries, but then what takes place, including Uranus into Gemini in early July, but then we go later into 25 and they all back up and they revisit where they were. This is fascinating to me because 2025 is a transition year for sure. So September, October, November, Saturn goes back into Pisces. Neptune goes back into Pisces. Uranus goes back into Taurus. So it's like, here's a preview energy. Yeah. You know, get used to it. This is, this is like one of those trailers for a movie. You get to see the overview and you get to feel it. And then they back up. In the fall of 2025, the later part of 2025, and then 26, they all move back into those new um, signs and they stay there. So February-ish, um, Saturn and Neptune move back into Aries. April in 2026, Uranus moves into Gemini. So we are in such a transition period in 23 with Pluto going into Aquarius and moving back into Capricorn for a good portion of 24 and then 25 this beginning I'm, I, we're just in a transition for 23 24 25 and then it sort of stabilizes in 26. Yeah and there's a kind of surging effect when those planets move into Aries as well isn't there? there's a surging forwards right okay we're now super clear because Aries is a very clear energy mm -hmm. And it's interesting, isn't it? When they retrograde, it's like just finishing up any unfinished business that hasn't been completely sorted before this whole new episode for humanity. And I, I really do see it as that. You know, I, I have several friends who've always talked about the golden age arriving in, in 2032. And we are absolutely on track for that. In fact, we're mm -hmm. ahead of progress, apparently. Mm -hmm. But sort of 2026, as you say, Kathy, is the very definite 
surging forwards with these energies. Mm -hmm. And I think it's immensely exciting to look forward to that because the more we can work with that in almost you know, if you are pregnant and you're looking forward to the baby being born, we're looking forward to this whole new life arriving. You know, there isn't a sort of wobble on that. Oh, I'm not so sure. And I think we'll go backwards. You know, you get, you can only move forwards with that, mm -hmm. with excited anticipation. And I think, you know, welcoming in this expanded consciousness of love is a good kind of background mantra to keep in mind, because with that Jupiter's move into cancer in 2025, I mean, that is beautiful nurturing energy for that next 12 months, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Holding people, nurturing, caring for people, making sure everybody is OK. You know, the North Node will have moved into into Taurus then, mm -hmm. which is very stabilizing as, as well. Um so there's some beautiful things. It's it's almost like the, the two really big years of shift. I think I'm seeing this almost as a year of, of truth and demolition. Next year, more of the beginning of the rebuilding of new earth. 2025, we see more evidence of that. And then 2026, it really, uh, you know, arrives for real and we can see it much more tangibly. Be watching for part two of my interview with astrologer Pam Gregory on the Maverick Podcast. <music>